Mystery Geek here. A little while ago, over on RCG Racing, I posted up a subscriber update video. And I'll post a link down in the description for that. And when we were in that video, we were talking about how when I go tractor hunting and I bring home an engine, I categorize them in three categories. I categorize them in screwed, maybe, and flip. Flip engines are when it's nothing more than just a carburetor, a starter, a coil, something that is simple. Screwed are the engines where you go to turn this flywheel and you can hear nothing but chunkies. If you go to turn that flywheel on any of these modern Briggs & Stratton engines and all you hear is chunkies and grinding and stuff like that, the chances are on the bottom of your connecting rod you probably blew out right here and when that happens these decide to split into about 20 billion shards that blow out all your timing, all your oilers, everything. Engine is screwed. Don't even bother. But then I have a third category. And I want a full disclaimer here. If you have a maybe motor, like this one is, you never, ever, ever put them in a customer machine. This is a maybe motor, and I'll even show you how to go and find a maybe motor or what it is that classifies it as a maybe motor in just a sec. So listen, this is a maybe motor. There's no compression. You can't hear any of the signs of compression. So, what makes it a maybe motor? A maybe motor is when you snap the connecting rod like this. And the easiest way to find a maybe motor is if I pull this spark plug boot, and I'll reposition you guys. So if I take this spark plug and I pull this spark plug out for you, like so. Now, if you're familiar with finding top dead center on a motor, then you know that the easiest way to find top dead center on one of these is the old screwdriver trick. So if I take that and I pull it out, that is horrifically corroded. Holy cow. I'm going to bet a lack of oil change is what really started this whole fiasco. That's why we've got this bucket over here. We're going to drain out and see what condition the oil is in in a sec. So we'll put that over in the old egg crate, egg carton, whatever. So the way you find top dead center, I find the easiest thing to do is a really long 3 8 extension because it's just the right size to fit down into the spark plug hole and it doesn't gnarl up and mess up threads. So we're going to put that in and right there we can feel it tapping on the piston. So if I hold that right there, and my finger is a gauge, if this had a connecting rod that was attached, I should be able to turn the flywheel and have that move out. Nothing. No movement whatsoever. So for the giggles of it, we're going to pull this valve cover off, and we're going to see if the valves even move. I recommend oftentimes a small inch-pound impact like this for doing this kind of work. The real reality is, if you're using a small inch-pound impact, you're never going to be able to go and strip out these threads, putting it together or taking it apart. So, it's always just a good idea. And as we can see here, that gasket is in good condition. So we'll be able to reuse that. And now let's see if those valves will move. Nope. Nothing. So we've got worse issues than I was thinking we did. But we're still going to tear it down just to see if...
While we're here talking about these motors and stuff, I wanted to talk about the connecting rods. So, if you look up these two connecting rods, this one is for a 21 horsepower single, and this one is for a 17 horsepower, they come up with two different model numbers, but yet they are exactly the same here, exactly the same here, and exactly the same length, and they even cost exactly the same amount on Amazon. So, what's the difference? I'm gonna lower the camera down and give you five seconds to see. Right there, you should see the difference. So, if you look here, you'll see there's no hole and no hole hole and a hole that's the difference in the two now the question is is this one with the holes better or is this one without the holes better i'm not sure but they're exactly the same length different part numbers and the difference and the only difference in them is hole and hole there and there so when you're replacing make sure that you're looking to go and see which one it is all right, so I hate these things. They never end up working right, and with the age, they tend to heat up and they tend to leak. So I usually rip these off on my own personal machines. So there's a spring on the inside, and what you do is you push in and then turn, and it's supposed to unlock, except for... That's not a good sign. That just came loose from that engine block right there. That's not supposed to do that. Well, let's see what happens if we just unscrew it, whether it'll drain that way. Oh yeah, that's pretty. And there's a little push in and turn tab that's supposed to work, but apparently this one didn't. Yeah, I'm getting my high quality table really, really dirty right now. I blame you guys. I want to pause the video for a second in order to be able to show you these two heads because there are generation differences in these heads. Now, the casting number on both of these heads is 20, and you can find that casting number here and that casting number here. Now, as far as Briggs is concerned, these both come up as the exact same head, but there is a major difference in the two. This one here is reinforced on the top, right in here, because of a different flow pattern that they designed for it. The other thing you won't notice from the outside. So if I take this one and I flip it up, and while we're right here, I know that one of the questions is going to be, did it have a stuck valve? Nope. Nope. And make sure you pay attention to these caps. They're really easy to lose, and they're one of those things like a 10 millimeter socket. So if we flip this up and carefully set it down, right now, you should be able to see the difference. See that? See that? So I'm going to go and flip this one back over so I don't accidentally damage it, because I don't care about this older one. This right here, these used to actually heat crack right in here. And they would end up causing blow through and everything. You'd do your head gaskets, you'd do all kinds of stuff to them. 
and inevitably they would still run as if they had a blown head gasket. And the reason was right in this spot that there's an X on this one to reinforce, this would heat crack and there would be just enough of a gap that would form in order to act like a blown head gasket. So that's our little tip I wanted to go and point out while we're right here. This motor is just a compendium of bad signs to watch out for. Look at this. I don't know if you can see that. See, there's that, there's that, and then, wow. Somebody decided to put that on with channel locks. Alright, I'm going to grab that right now. Because these should only be hand tight. They should not take much effort whatsoever. Yeah. Somebody channel locked that. That's not coming off. Alright, I got you guys in the tripod so I don't drop you. This is a oil filter gripping socket. You can pick these up at AutoZone or any local place. Um, tell them that you have a Toyota Corolla or a Geo Prism because that's what these originally started really showing up for. And we're going to see if we can get this thing off of here. Wow! I am crunching it, trying to get it off. No, nope, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Um... Let's push it this way, so that I can push against it, maybe. And these gripping sockets are great, but if you do start to get one that's crunching, they will literally crunch it the rest of the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm bending my gripping socket trying to do that. We'll find another idea here. Well, this is another one of my favorite tools. This one's actually from my grandfather. It's over 60 years old at this point. And it's just a regular old-fashioned chain wrench. And we're going to try that and see how that works. Now, the trick with a chain wrench is you got to get that tip to gouge into something. And then after that, you should be able to give her the beans. Or maybe not. Or in the words of my generation, give her the dinner! Yeah. There. Yeah, there is... Whoa. More oil. There is a special place in engineering hell for the person that did that. That was stupid. Remember how we were talking about there is maybe engines and then there are screwed engines? Tipping this up, we officially discovered that it's a screwed engine. But we're going to take it apart anyway, just to see. But literally, as I tried to pick this up, that fell out the oil drain port. There you go. That is a bolt for the connecting rod snapped off. So I guarantee that this motor is done for, but we're going to rip it apart the rest of the way anyway, just to show you guys. Oh yeah, you can hear all the chunkies. All the good chunkies. There's another good chunky there. Yep. Before I crack this open, I'm going to go and make a prediction, which is the reason why it is the moment you hear that sound, it is screwed. Don't bother trying to tear it apart to fix it. Just rip off the good parts and go from there. I'm going to bet that when the rod broke at the bottom of the rod, it scoured the crank. I'm going to bet that the cam either has a broken gear on it or the cam is bent. And I'm going to go and bet that where the cam goes into the bottom of this, it's going to be snapped off, bent, or that there's going to be chunks missing. So that's my prediction. And that 
would make this a thoroughly unworth rebuilding motor. All right, bigger electrical ooga dooga, take two. By the way, if anybody's been thinking about buying one of these skill impacts and stuff, the problem is it's only 200 pounds. And what I'm running into a lot is that 200 pounds just isn't good enough. Here, Chunky's dropping all over the place. There we go. There. So, my first prediction was that the oiler would be broken, which was this right here. And this one has a mechanical pump. And if it doesn't have a mechanical pump and it has splash lube, this isn't here. It goes all the way down. And that's usually snapped off in there. Ironically, this actually doesn't look as if it's that scarred up. Normally, this piece right here in one direction or the other is usually snapped. So I was wrong on that prediction. But let's take a look at the rest of it. All right, so... Here is your governor, and as you can see, that sits right here, and this right here is all jammed up with random rod chunks. That's why that wouldn't turn, and usually what happens is normally a rod chunk comes down in here, and it gets jammed while this thing is turning, and it blows this to smithereens. So, more rod chunks. There we go. We'll take our governor off and we'll check that just for the snot of it. Not that anybody really wants a governor anyway. And right there. See that? Can you see it right now? It's in the oil. Right there is a broken tooth. This always happens, which means you've got to go and replace that. You can see there's a scarred up area there. And we'll lift it up and out. And usually these get bent when it goes off. Yep, right there. So let me find a straight edge to compare it to. See that? Can you see that bend? So there we go. Screwed. So I got one out of three predictions correct on the screwed hold up i wasn't quite done with that so remember how i said that it would be broken on that end this one decided to do a rarity usually it breaks on that end on this one it broke right there can you see all those cracks there's a giant crack on one side and then right there if you can see it is all kinds of mangled. So my other prediction was that this would be screwed. And there we go. There's some more off of there. And what you're going to find is all of this base is going to be filled with the end of the rod. There's the base of the rod. There's the other side of the rod. And we'll see if I can get this to turn just a little. Right. Oh, let's go grab a flashlight here. And there is what I was telling you about how they snap off. So, if it had a snapped off just right there, we'll see if we can get a different camera angle. See it? If it had a snapped off just right there, it would have been a maybe motor. Because what happens when they snap there is that it spins around the crank and it hits usually right in here somewhere. And as long as it stops, 
right in there. There might be a little bit of scouring, some scoring in here. As long as it stops in there, then it's fine. But if it makes it around, then it slams up against that. And that's how you get this. See right there? You can see the scar on one side. That ends up coming around there, slams into it, and bends it. And then the chunkies bouncing around end up taking the teeth out. So at that point, you're screwed because you need a crank, you need a cam, you need a connecting rod, and who knows what else. Sorry guys that we couldn't do a recovery video, but at least you had a learning experience as to why it is I classify anything that sounds like a maraca for a Briggs & Stratton single as being a screwed motor.